Wow, hello there. This is this is the process part with the silicon salmon and messing around with the synthesizer thingy. Because, you know, because I can. Because it's fun. What's this? This is. I can do strange noises at the time I feel like it. <sighs> I'm easily amused. I've always wanted to learn how to play the keyboard. But my mother would not show me how to play when I asked her as a child. She was not into, she didn't think I really wanted to know. So I did not learn this skill. But I can plunk on it all I like. I dig that, that is fun times, this is good. So, um, this is the process pod. I think we're up to, what's, what number is it? I don't know. All the things, I think I, I think I start recording and realize there's some one thing that I thought I was gonna do, and I forgot. And then I think there was another thing, and then I forget that. Mm. I take a vitamin D now to help with the forgetting. <laughs> Uh, 28. So, hey, this is 29. Process pod number 29. I've been busy this week. I got a lot of videos up on the YouTubes. Um, I got asked. I have new patrons on Patreon, and I really should. It's a little overdue. I should be saying, hello, thank you. Um, merci beaucoup for your support. Uh, let's see, do this in the order. Let's go in here and say hello and thank you to Len, Kara, Colleen, Ross, Gregory, Gregory, uh, George, Sonia, and Mars. Um, there's Gregory C and Gregory H. We'll call it for now. Uh, Gregory C. Uh, is it Gordino? Gordino. Great. Gordino and Gregory uh, Hoff, Hoffel, Hoffman. Yeah. Gregory Hoffman. I'll remember eventually. I'm really bad remembering names. That's one of my, like, absolute Achilles heels is retaining new names. So sad. Uh, the... is cool. It's actually, I was looking at this, and it's been nice. That's a nice bit of growth. Uh, a couple of them are student patrons. Mostly it's people either uh, subscribing, getting my comics. So you get $2 a month and you get all my comics um, and access to my blog and stuff like that. And then there's sort of like uh, portrait, social social media portraits things. I've done, just did one for Lenep. Um, and another one's coming up for Colleen. Got to get to that next. And I've got some, I have some very backlog. This is a, a, a very late concept for a sketch for a patron. And then I have a bunch of Dracula commissions that really need to be they're very late. I've done one and a half and laid on another one, but I've got five to do. And it really doesn't take long once I get focused, but it's been hard to get into the space to do that thing and have other deadlines and the things going on in a different direction. Of course, again, yeah, if you want to sign up to my Patreon for $10 a month as a student patron, that entitles you to sort of a base level of uh, monthly feedback. You, once a week, once a month, you can send me your homework. You can actually send me small bits of stuff once a week, but I will at the end of the month spend some, sit down and spend some time. Probably, um, I'm thinking I I might use Zoom to pre-record them more often. Uh, if I could do it one on one live, I'll I'll do that sometimes too. But coordinating schedules seems to be a little tricky, and I feel like some people also get antsy, a little insecure, social anxiety, having get direct crits. So whereas people really seem to like the videos, uh, and I've been doing that for my Sin Studio class as well. So I might do that more. Zoom lets me really easily share screen and record a session of, of notes and feedback. So I'll probably be doing that for my Patreon students if they prefer it, um, or if it's just a question of scheduling. Yeah, that's all my that's all my Patreon patron thingies. That's that's it. I think I kind of figured it out. It did I mention it's hot here? It's a little hot here. So I'm going to wrap this one up with a question from Patreon. Mars Eve, the newest Patreon patron, a, a re reader, uh, wrote me some questions about anthologies, which is sort of appropriate because, like, I'm I'm doing one. I'm working on one right now myself. Uh, I think I have here. Yes. 
So you can see, this is my uh, personal anthology project, Mind Engine. And I did a couple called Revolver. I really like the format because it allows me to work on a variety of ideas at the same time and put them out a little more frequently than a graphic novel would come out, um, in theory. Although this, this book was meant to come out this uh, May and got delayed. Um, and it's a little stalled now because creatively my head is in a, a weird place. It's not quite where these stories need to be. I'm going to need to tune out the world. They call them self anthologies, but I would call that like a, a single creator anthology. That's what I'm doing with Mind Engine. That's also like Eight Ball or Acme Novelty Library. Um, to a degree, Rubber Blanket, although that was actually a bit of a collaboration with a few people. Um, yeah, and I like that. But then they also asked me about regular anthologies, a lot of people getting started in them, and how do you uh, look for or participate in them, and how do you stand out? Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, standing out part is, that's a, a different question. How do you stand out creatively in any, as a, as a creator generally, in, in any media? It has a lot to do with what you're doing with it that is, I don't know about unique, but specific to you and not being done by somebody else already in a very similar way. Um, thing is, I don't try to do that too intentionally, uh, which, and I've never worried too much about being unique. It's been hard to get people to focus on my work because I actually shift gears and change vo voices and styles from project to project. Um, it's true, yeah, you start, you're seeing again now I don't know about getting their start in comics, but getting noticed in print for the first time uh, in anthology books. A lot, of, a lot of creators getting in that way. If you can, uh, I think you have to be part of the communities around the books. So online comics communities are a big part of that now, but there's also probably local ones like the Toronto Comics Anthologies, very much tied to uh, Toronto creators because it's about Toronto stuff. Um, and a lot of projects have those sorts of connections. So that's part of how you're going to hear about them. For me personally, they're, I'm usually out of sync with them. I want to be doing other things, and they usually come up in the middle of something. So I haven't really been in that many. I was just asked about doing one that would have been a paying job. And it would have been kind of interesting, but it would be another historical story that I just wasn't in the... I, I had my fill of that for a while. I've actually started writing on a historical story, but that one's an ancient, like it goes back to Egypt. Um, different period, different culture. But I don't think I would just aesthetically approach it very differently than Dracula. And I'm, I'm, what I did in Dracula is definitely in a stylistic and aesthetic direction that I'm I'm not eager to return to right now. I, I had my fill of it, um, and I'm doing very different other things. A lot more clean, simple line work. It's one of the things I'm thinking about for the Egyptian thing. It's just a very clean, open line work thing. Um, been really liking some artists like... What's his name again? Freddy... Carrasco? Carrasco? I'm not sure you say your last name, dude. I need to figure that out. I want to interview him at some point. Does really cool stuff. I picked this up in the holidays. It was on the, the, in the Big Island uh, in the Recommend Shop. Uh, recommend Rack, along with some other cool things like this. Thing. Tongues. Um, oops. No, I can't put it back. There we go. Uh, but Gleam is this really neat book. It's also got this cool spot varnish tile thing on the cover um a lot of wordless pages i was looking out on the rack i'm just like oh shit i like this but it's also very it's not just simple and clean the line style the rendering looks almost intentionally pixelated not even almost, definitely intentionally a little pixelated. It's a little rough. It's, it's very, it's a, what we call a deadline when you're doing pen lines and you have no feathering. Uh, but it's very open and strong blacks and whites and a little gradient here and there. This room, I remember seeing that going, oh, it's not quite, it's not the same. This is not the same. It's not the same, but it's a little bit, a little bit close that shot for comfort with a shot in uh, New Armageddon Blues that I just drew. 
This is like a science fiction, surrealist, trippy. Mary Manga influenced, and and uh, Freddie is currently, if I'm not mistaken, living in Japan, uh, doing. I'm not sure if it's animation or manga, but yeah, beautiful minimalist stuff, and I want to do more of that for a variety of reasons. One of which is it goes so much faster. It is so much, so much faster. So, the um. That's anthologies. That's what I think of them. I think they're good. You need to stand out by standing out, finding your own voice. Um, certainly, I guess when you talk about themes and stories, if you know what the theme is, try to find an interesting angle at it, find something provocative, has something to say. You're not looking again to stand out by comparing yourself to others. Cause you're not going to know probably what the other people are doing in the book, but you want to find something interesting, uh, insightful, useful, say something that's going to stand up over time and uh, be come from a human place and be honest. I don't know if that makes sense. It's the kind of writing I'm interested in doing anyway. Um, yeah. I do love the diversity anthology. So that's one of the things that uh, 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 Mars Eve was saying, and why they, they all, and I, I do too. I love uh, really good, well curated comic anthologies, they're amazing. When they're not so well curated, they're not as amazing, but they can be really interesting. They're sort of hit and miss. Um, but that kind of surprise inside type feature is entertaining. And I like it. It's a great way to, to get a lot of bite-sized comics. When I used to have, ages ago, this rack was in my bathroom next to the toilet different apartment but i quite appreciated that feature and i would have comics in it and a lot of them were anthologies because they're perfect for sitting on the can and reading a story or two um these days i just take a break at my desk and pull out some comics to read this one is wild i'm gonna have to do a flip through for both gleam and tongue uh, is it Tongue 3? I think it's Tongue Book 3, which is cute because there's, like, no Tongue Book 1 or 2. Yeah. I forget, again, I was just looking up who did this because this one that completely lacks any artist credit. <laughs> you bastard. Oh, wait a minute. What's this? Oh, I see something hidden away as much as possible. There we go. Niels Anderson. Niels, Jesus. Put your name on your work. <laughs> uh, it's a really trippy page layouts. Feels like it's inspired by board gaming. I genuinely appreciate these creative uses of space. Uh, and they work pretty well. They follow an if then, then this logic that is pretty solid. And that's when it comes to flow, that's your main, that's the thing you're doing. It, if then, then this. I guess it's, if that, then this. That's what it's supposed to be. I want to put the nice, the nice, interesting painted textures. It's an explosion, but it's like, it's very, makes me think of something alive. Very interesting work. Um, proper walkthrough book looking at session for another time i think it's good good link for for the process pod today i need to turn my ac on it's it's bloody sweaty in here yeah uh hey patreon.com slash uh and there you could pledge and if you pledge to be my patron you could pledge like just two bucks 
to read my comics and get all the bloggy things. And when I post YouTube, it would show up in your... I don't post all my YouTube videos to Patreon because I think it would kind of spam people's inboxes a bit. But uh, I'll, I post notifications of them periodically there, especially the key ones. And uh, all my comics... Uh, $2 a month, uh, you, you actually get access to a complete digital library of everything I'm doing. Um, and then on, on top of that, uh, ten, at, at $10, you can be a student, and at 5 you can get your social media portraits. And I, I could just sit here and make more comics and entertain all of you more. Wouldn't have to worry about what's happening, where's the rent coming from, what what's going on in the world. I need to just turn that off and go make more comics.